Let's see. I think I'm on live. I hope I am. And uh, if I am, is there somebody that's supposed to like? Does this have comments or something? I don't know. Okay. Okay, so I am live. First of all, good afternoon to everybody, or if you're on the uh, East Coast or something, a good afternoon. If you're on the West Coast, uh, good morning. And uh, I want to take a second. I want to get some folk on because I want to talk to some folk who have been walking with me for a long time. And um, there's some things that are on my mind and there's a lot of different outlets talking and I figured the best way to kill it all is to uh, speak myself. And because I understand how the world works now more than ever, the only way for you to be able to share without people trying to reframe the narrative is to control the content. So this is uh, my content. Shout out to my man, Prophecy. <laughs> walkie talkie, walkie talkie, walkie talkie, walkie talkie. Um, I'm going to wait a couple seconds. Hi to my cousin Tish. Uh, I love you, Cousin Tish. Tish Norman is a phenomenal, gifted communicator, brilliant, academic mind. I know you've been walking through a lot, Tish, uh, with the loss of your friend uh, to domestic violence. And I'm praying for the family of uh, that woman and uh, that God will somehow give them peace. But I uh, want to say hello to my cousin. I love you very much. And uh, Dothan, Alabama is in the building the uh, hometown of my beloved bride, who we just celebrated uh, eight years of marriage on December 11th. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm outside of my church and I want to take a minute, first of all, to say thank you to the people who have been walking with me before I ever was this person, before I was ever known uh, or whatever anybody who knows me from the first time i preached in september of uh, 94 to right now anyone who knows me knows i've only ever served at the request of the king when i was working at the the city gospel mission in cincinnati at the homeless shelter i preached then like i preach right now like i don't have another day left um what i want to talk about here is uh, my eight year wedding anniversary. Um, you know, I never saw a good marriage growing up. None of the men in my family have done right by their wives, except my uncle Al, who's married to my aunt Sherry. Um, but the men that were born in my family, my father, my uncle, my mother's brothers, they've never done marriage successfully. And one of the things that uh, I was always afraid of is that I wouldn't have what it took to be a good husband, to be a good father, because I never saw that. My mother's dad, Emmett Hill Sr., was a preacher, uh, and they had five children, my mom and my aunt and her three brothers, and uh, then he walked away. So you can be saved and preaching and walk away from your family. My grandmother got remarried, we had three more kids, and he walked away. So my grandmother, who loves God, was left with eight kids, two ex-husbands. None of them gave her one dollar uh, really towards the raising of their children. I grew up with those stories. I grew up seeing uh, physical abuse, domestic abuse, domestic violence. I saw my aunt's boyfriend. Um, my older, my oldest aunt, her boyfriend uh, threatened her with a knife and I was looking through the screen door and then he turns to me and he runs at me with the knife and I take off running probably as fast as I've ever run, you know, because he was high on drugs or whatever. But I remember thinking about what I've seen and I swore to God I'd never perpetuate that. I'd always be more. 
You know, in my life, I've had dreams. Everybody should have dreams, things that they uh, fight for. See, because here's what I know. Life is not promised. You can be here today and be gone tonight. The reason why my wife and I wanted to have an eight-year wedding celebration is because I needed a new beginning. Eight is the number of new beginnings. In the Hebrew, it's a significant word. It is a constant reminder of what God completed and what God will begin again. Every eighth day is a reminder of the promises of God, the newness of God. It literally signifies plumpness or fruitfulness. Um, and when you are circumcised, you were circumcised on the eighth day. The eighth is always a significant number to the people of God. Um, I didn't know what I didn't know about marriage until I got in it. And um, there was this thing on Sister Circle where I was talking about my wife had more pain birthing me than our children. And people took what was metaphorical and made it uh, literal and, and misconstrued it. My point was my wife has pushed for my dreams and my vision and she has toiled with a man who was still trying to find himself. Uh, and that carries a weight. And I wanted to honor her for how she has walked with me. I've covered her. She's covered me. Um, but the truth is, I have a pure heart. My heart is pure. Uh, but everybody doesn't have a pure heart, and they don't care anyway, because there are some people who are committed to misunderstanding you. There are people who don't like you. They, they've never liked you. They just want a reason to say it. Some people are insecure. Others are jealous. Others feel that they're right. Um, but then there are other people that just don't like you because they got devils. <laughs> and that's a real thing. Um, but I wanted to talk to y'all because this is um, my heart. And I want y'all to hear me. Uh, there's a lot of stories going around about a gift that I gave my wife. Um, you know, and I want to talk about it for a second because it matters. And there's a couple things that matter because the, the stories that I hear, and I've tried to not listen to it, but one of them is pastor buys his wife, you know, this expensive car. First of all, it wasn't a pastor that bought the car. It was a husband that bought the car. Get that in your spirit. I'm a husband first. Don't confuse what I do with who I am. What I do is I pastor God's people. Who I am is a husband and a father, and I'll do anything to honor them. And I won't ask permission from anybody to do it. No man should. I learned this from Reverend uh, Reginald Lyons, his wife Cynthia in Cincinnati, my homeboy Andre, uh, Andre Lyons, Corey and Dante. When I was growing up, he was one of the foremost examples of what a husband should be. He bought his wife the best car. You know, I forget if what kind of Cadillac. It was just so fly. And he had kind of like another car or something. But whatever it was, the wife always drove better than the husband. You feel me? And her car would go in the, in the driveway first, and then he parked behind her. And I don't know why that made me cry. I was young, but it made me cry because it meant that he was covering. He was protecting his wife. He was like, babe, you go in first. I got you. You know, and I've, I've, the men that I saw growing up, their wives always had a nice car. They drove, if they worked hard, the wife drove well, the husband would drive the truck, the wife would drive the sedan. You feel me? And, um, and so I say that to say, in my life, I never saw a man do right by his wife. My father didn't do right by my mom. Okay, my uncles didn't do right by theirs. My cousins who've been married, their husbands didn't do right by them. So I feel the weight of an entire family on me. So when I think about what my wife has sacrificed for me, she gave me two kids. She's gone through a thyroidectomy. They had precancerous cells on there. People don't know what we've gone through. So it's nothing to me to bless her. What, what should concern people who are actually genuinely concerned is did this man use any money from the church to do this? And the answer is no, absolutely not. 
and God take my life on this live feed if I did. For those who don't know, me and my wife have a show on the Oprah Winfrey Network. We're working on season four right now. Shh, don't tell anybody. That's four seasons, okay? And I'm not an actor on it. I'm a producer of it. Get that straight. Oh, by the way, I just signed my second book deal. Win From Within is out now. Go buy it. But the book deal comes with resources. The TV show comes with resources. I also have other streams. And I've also been wise with my savings and investments. I'm not going into details, but the point is this. I have created and, and been patient my whole life for this moment. I'm 45. I'm supposed to wait till I'm 70 to live my best life. And my best life is seeing my wife happy. It's not like I'm sitting up trying to do something for me. I want my wife to be happy. And every man should be able to do whatever is in his ability to do. Nobody knows how long it took me to work, to save, to invest. I walked through making sure that my credit was right because all of those things matter. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I want people to hear me. I'm tired of all of these people talking all of this stuff and you're a prosperity preacher. I'm, I don't believe and I don't think everybody's going to be a millionaire. I don't think everybody's going to be a billionaire. I do pray that everybody is debt free. I pray that husbands can take care of their wives and that you're able to take care of your children. And the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And I'm definitely uh, living that life so that when I die, I've done the best I can with what I've been given. Um, this is important too. I could die tonight and what a horrible indictment it would be on me that I didn't give the best that I could to my wife because I was worried about people, people who pay no bills in my house, people who didn't like me anyway. I'm going to serve God. And as long as what I do is honorable, ethical, and, and not illegal, nobody should worry about how I choose to bless my wife or how I choose to uh, express my love. I don't ask you what you driving or what you're doing. What should matter is, were any resources from the church used? And the answer is no. So that's where this story should end. Because I ain't no pastor right now. I'm a husband right now. I'm a father right now. You know what else? I'm not taking student loans out for my kids' college. I'm writing checks. Is that wrong too? Because that's a whole lot of money for where my kids are going. I think this is the other part. And I guess I'll leave it alone after this. Me and my wife are doing fine. Serving God in Houston. And minding our own business. We came to Greenville, South Carolina. Because we believe we heard God. And I just shout out to Withrow. Don't make me cry, Maurice. Shout out to Withrow. Shout out to my hometown. It's something funny, especially if you're from Cincinnati, you know what I'm talking about. You know, I grew up in Avondale. I grew up driving out to the suburbs, looking at houses, hoping that one day I would be able to live in one because we lived in an apartment on Dana Avenue and we were grateful for it. We were grateful for it. And here's the other thing. And my, my babe just, just, I was getting ready to say it. When we got here, we came here on faith. And let me tell you what faith is. Faith is not knowing where you're going to lay your head. We were staying in hotels. Me, my wife, my kids were staying in different hotels in Greenville for months preaching the gospel so that everybody else could get established because we believed in the vision. We made sure that our whole staff had places to stay while we were sitting in hotels, in double rooms. We had a king size bed and then, the, you know, the door in the middle and the kids were over there on the other side. When we would, when I would travel and go out of town, I'd have to pack a bag and leave the hotel, go to the, to the airport, come back and forth. And I think that's important. And then when we weren't in a hotel, we finally were able to get an Airbnb up until about a month ago. Hear me, a month ago when we were able to get a home. But for six months, we were itinerant, 
living in hotels and Airbnbs so everybody else could be blessed. Nobody knows the sacrifices that go with ministry. And I'm going to say this for anybody else, because no matter what I say, people are going to hate. We went to the All-Star game. I got a chance to preach at the NBA All-Star game in February. And at our hotel was a presentation for this new car. And oh my gosh, I've loved cars my whole life. That's just one of my passions. It doesn't make me, doesn't make me a better person. It just means that it's something that I like. Everybody has passions. I saw my wife's eyes light up. I saw her eyes light up. And she was like, oh my gosh, this would be a dream. That's all she had to say to me. Now, I didn't have the money, but I went in there in faith. I was like, babe, make one up in the computer like you like it. And then she did. I took that print out. Little did she know. God was blessing me with another deal. So I took some of that money. You have to put a deposit down on a car. I put a few thousand down or whatever. But the car is a lot. And I was like, just because you put a deposit down, I mean, you're going to get approved. But from February until last Saturday, I was walking on faith. And by the grace of God, wise investment, savings, wonderful opportunities and book deals and all these other things that the Lord did. The Lord did. The Lord did. I was able to be a blessing to my wife. And now, nah, for those who are asking, well, is it paid off? That's First of all, it's none of your business, but no. <laughs> it's none of your business, so I'm not going to tell you. The point is this. I was able to bless my wife. And I say that to say this. Nobody sees the sacrifice. And nobody knows that this ain't a one-off thing. I've been working on that for... 10 months hoping that God would show up and he did and here's what I know life is not promised and God forbid anything happened to Aventer but she said something to me two nights ago that has stayed with me the rest of my life she said if I leave here you made my dreams come true with this beautiful vow renewal and the way you have lavished me with your gifts and your love, your expression of love. She said, if I leave here, you bless me. So I don't really care what you think. All the people that don't like me, I don't care. You didn't like me anyway. All the people that have something to say, you don't know me. You don't know me if you're not from Cincinnati. You don't know me if you don't know nothing about Grippos, Graders, La Rosa's. Dana Avenue, catching the 51 bus to the 11. Stop by Buskin Bakery. Get back over before the bus come to get to school. You don't know nothing about walking in the rain down the hill by UDF. You don't know what it's like to drive to the neighborhoods that you wish you could afford one day, hoping that God would give you the ability to do it. I got one wife. I got one life. I got two kids. And while they're alive, I'm going to do whatever I can to bless them. And I hope you do the same for your family. It's not about what you do. It's that you give your whole heart while you do it. But I'm a 45-year-old man, and I've worked my whole life. I should be able to bless my wife. So that's really all I want to say. I do want to say thank you for the people who know me, who love me, who understand my heart. And for those who are just coming on, I want to make it clear. Not a nickel, not a penny from this church, Relentless Church, went towards the gift that I gave my wife. That matters. That's the only thing that matters. Because I know like you know, there are some pulpit pimps out here who take church money and do the wrong thing. But I work hard for my family. And I tithe and I sow and I've done it my whole life. And I'll continue to do it. So anyway, I just wanted to say that. Sorry for crying. But I feel like people don't know the story. And I was tired of people talking. So I felt like talking. I had something to say. Love y'all. I had something to say. This is my life. I hope I live a long time. But if I don't, my job is to make my wife's dreams come true every single day. That's the job of a husband. At least that's what I think. And uh, I don't know. I guess that's it. Um. Hey, Jamila, 
Love y'all. And uh, anyway, why everything else is going viral, I hope this post goes viral. People who want the truth, here's the truth. Husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church, even giving himself a ransom. That means give everything, sow everything, give the best of everything. And that's where I'm at. So please, I don't know how to, I'm not on Facebook a lot and I'm gonna get on here more often, but share this. I love you, Dwayne. I love you, James. These are the men that stood with me in my wedding. You see what I'm saying? See, people don't know that when we got married, I was in the negative in my bank account. When we went on our honeymoon, I didn't have any money. We was over there eating shrimp cocktail. But we had to share one because it's all we had. So eight years later, to see where the Lord brought us, it's not about stuff. It's about him making dreams come true. I don't know, maybe sometimes I don't have the faith I need because there are times when I feel like I would love to live a full span of years. But sometimes I can't always see the future. So I live like there's no tomorrow. And I'm a love like there's no tomorrow. So that's it. This brother AJ Johnson said, I've had eight deaths in my family in the last six months. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, brother. And uh, anyway, I appreciate y'all. Shout out to James Bridgewater, whose wife is being completely healed from cancer, even as I'm speaking. And James, thank you for calling and checking on me yesterday. And I love what you said. Nobody's going to tell you how to bless your wife after all y'all have walked through. Because when you hear words like cancer thrown around, you don't got time to be wondering what people are going to say. If I bought my wife a mid-sized car, they wouldn't have said nothing. But because I fought to give her the best that I could, people have something to say. So anyway, I love all y'all. And, uh, and I'm also grateful for people who don't like me because it just keeps me closer to God. And it reminds me of the people who matter. And the people who matter are the people who see your heart. And I've always been a heart person. Unfortunately, there are people who are not heart people. But I don't live for them. I'm living for God. So we're going to have church Sunday and we're going to worship the Lord. I love y'all. Have a great day. I'm going to go in the sanctuary and worship God. Maybe shed some tears because this thing's been weighing on me. I'm going to live my life and I hope you live yours. And I hope you live blessed. See y'all soon.